Now that I have my auth code, it's time to exchange it for a token. The token endpoint requires some form of privileged authorization, a signed assertion or an authorization header, as well as the authorization code and the same redirect URI that was used when you requested the auth code from your application. For my authorization header, I'll fill in a Base64 encoded client ID and client secret here. Because we cannot guarantee that value in a publicly available client will be kept secure, it's important that I don't make this request from my mobile app, but instead that I issue my token request from a secure place like my server. Because I will likely need to issue a token request away from where I issued the authorization request, it's common to reperform the discovery step before issuing the token request. Remember, you can pass the mobile country code and mobile network code, the MCC and MNC, over the network as a way to ensure that you can reperform discovery for a given user. These identifiers are returned from the discovery responses as well as from the SDKs that ZenKey provides. Let's look at that discovery call. Here you can see I've got the discovery endpoint and I'm going to issue a GET request to it. I've provided the MCC MNC corresponding to Verizon, my carrier, as well as the client ID that I'm requesting for. I'll send that request. And here you can see I received the discovery payload for Verizon. So now that I have the token endpoint, I'll copy that and return to my token request. I'll hit this endpoint. I've already configured my authorization headers. Now I just need to provide an authorization code. I'll request one from my app and I'll configure it here. It's important to remember that these authorization codes are short-lived, so you should never store one. They only last about a minute. I've printed out my code here, so I'll copy this and add it to my request. Got my grant type, authorization code, the redirect URI I just used to produce this, and the code itself. I'll send that post request, and you can see I've received a successful response. In my successful response, you can see I received several tokens and some metadata. The access token is used as the bearer token when making requests to the user info endpoint. The ID token is the primary extension of the OAuth2 spec that OpenID provides. The ID token is a JSON web token that contains claims about the authentication of an end user by an authorization server. You can read more about the ID token and its standard properties in the OpenID specification, but let's take a look and see what we've got here. I'm gonna copy this. And I'll hop over to my terminal to decode it. Here you can see the contents of my JWT. You'll always want to perform standard validation of your token to ensure its integrity. Mine is signed using HS256 and signed with my client's secret, which I can confirm. Additionally, you'll want to ensure the validity of the claims it holds. For more information regarding each of these claims, check out the developer documentation. However, I'd like to highlight just a few here. You can see that my issuer here matches the issuer returned by the discovery endpoint. And additionally, that this nonce corresponds to the nonce I sent in my request. Verifying the values that you receive in the ID token is important, especially if you're passing a nonce or a context string to your authorization request. By checking their integrity round trip, you'll ensure a high bar of security for your users, as well as your application's internal integrity. Finally, let's jump over and take a look at the user info endpoint. This endpoint is going to return the user info explicitly granted by your user. We can see the scopes the user has consented to over in our token request, right here. And we can retrieve the user info endpoint from the re response from the discovery request we made earlier. I'm going to be issuing a GET request to this endpoint, 
and I'm going to provide our access token as authorization. I'll send that request. And here you can see the info the user's granted access to returned by their carrier. In my case, that's Verizon. You can see the name, email they've granted access to, as well as their phone number. Lastly, we received the sub identifier. This pairwise identifier uniquely identifies this user, however, only in the context of my specific client ID to protect the user's identity. I can use this identifier to create a new record in my users table or to associate an existing user with this Zen key identity.